Good evening everyone, today we are going to do the daily lead code challenge of 24 January 2023 that is question number 909 snakes and ladders. It is a very big question, it may seem a big question but it is very simple if you know the approach and you have tried this one. Just try to read this question on your own and then come back to the video. I hope you have read the question, let me explain it to you. They are saying that you are given a n cross n matrix which is a snake and ladder game. You simply have to roll the dice which has 6 possibilities and you have to move from 1 to the last, last index that is the end of the game in minimum steps. So that is what you have to do. So let's move on to the example and see what they are actually doing. So when you move on to the example you can see when you are at 1 you move to 2 it is 1 step and when you, and when you come to a ladder you go up and you come here. After this you cannot go behind you cannot go back step. You will move forward. So suppose you get 2 and you move to this snake here. So it is 2 step. Total 1 plus 1, 2 steps are done. And when snake bites you, you come here to 13. And after this you move 1 step to 14. So total 3 steps in now. And when you reach 14, you will ladder up up to here. And after this you will move 1 step to win the game. That is total of 4 steps. So this is the explanation of the first example and that is what you have to think. So whenever you are asked to return the minimum steps and you have several possibilities as when you are at 1 you have 6 possibilities right yes or no. You can either get 1 plus 1 2, 1 plus 2 3, 1 plus 3 4, 1 plus 5 6, 1 plus 6 7 and 1 plus 4 5. So you can either move to any of these positions. So there are many possibilities possible. So in such cases when we have to return minimum steps or a minimum answer. We use BFS breath first search. It will give us the optimal approach. So that is what you have to apply. So please think around it and then come back to the video. So I hope you tried the question. Now let me show you how to actually approach it. And what are the steps you need to take care of. The first thing you should know when you apply a BFS, what is the process? You use the data structure Q. Inside the Q, you push the first element. That is 1 in this case. When you push the 1, you mark it as visited. You mark it as visited. And when you enter a Q, after that, you pop this element. And then check all of its next possibility. That is, if this is an X element, it has more K possibilities. And k ranges from 1 to 6 as dice only have 6 possibilities. Yes or no? So from 1, where can you go? You can go to 2, you can go to 3, you can go to 4, you can go to 5, you can go to 6, you can go to 7. So there are 7 possibilities. So you will add those possibilities in the queue. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. You can go to these steps. And when you add these to queue, you will mark them as visited as well. So these all are visited. But one thing to notice in the question, you are not given these values. You are given minus 1 at the places, at the normal places. And whenever there is a ladder or there is a snake, you are given the coordinates where you are going to land when you reach those coordinates. Yes or no? What I mean to show you, you are given a matrix like this. When you reach to this second place, this is two second place. When you reach here, you directly move to the 15th place. Yes or no? Which was here. 15. So, how you can do, how you can deal with this question? Yes or no? You have to use something which will give you the coordinates. That when you, end, when you visit 2, after this you will visit 15. So that, after you have visited 2, you will add 15 to the queue. Yes or no? When you pop it. So that is what you have to think. That is the only difference in this question. Rest you have to apply just normal BFS which we do. So let's think around it. So I hope you tried thinking around it. So the way to deal with this condition is we will create a separate function get coordinate and that get coordinate function will tell that at second position we are having a value of 15. So we push 15 to our queue. So how do we deal with that actually? So whenever we are given a matrix, how do we do it? So if I have to find the row of this element, what I do? I do number minus 1 divided by the n. So in this case it is 12 minus 1 divided by 4. That is what? That is 3. Yes or no? So this is how you get the row. But in this case, you have to think that you are not, you are taking indexes from top to bottom. Yes or no? What I mean to say is, 
it is zero index and it is fifth index. So when we apply the DFS, we are starting from n minus one zero. That is the last row and first column. This was your one in the question. Yes or no? So you are starting from the last. And this formula is from top to bottom. TB you can say. So it is from top to bottom. So to get from bottom to top, what you have to do? You will simply minus the index from it. And why we are taking this minus 1? Because it is zero base indexing. So n minus 1 and let's say this answer is your TB. So n minus 1 minus TB will give you the exact row in this case is. Yes or no? So if I apply this here, if I have to get the row of this place, that is 3 comma 3 if I have to get it, its row is third row. So how can I get it? N value is 6 and its value is what? Number value is 13. Uh, let's see, not 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It's 15. 15 minus 1. So that is 14 by 6. When you get 14 by 6, it is what? It is 2. So is this the right row? No. So what we do? We do n minus 1 minus 2. So 5 minus 2, that is 3. Yes, 3 is the right row. So that is how you will get the row in your get coordinate function. This get coordinate function you have to complete. And now let's see for the columns. So for the columns, what you have to do, you always get column from right to left. But in the question, what we are given? We are given a zigzag pattern. Why zigzag pattern? Because you move from here, then move here, then again move here. So it is a zigzag pattern. You are not moving from right to left every time. So what we was doing? We were simply taking number minus one and modulus of it. Yes or no? Suppose if I have to get the column of this 12, what I will do? 12 minus 1 modulus 4. Yes or no? So 12 minus 1 is what? 11. 11 modulus 4. What will be the remainder? It will be 3. So its column is 3. So that is how you have to find column. But how do we deal with this zigzag condition? Same as we dealt with top to bottom and bottom to bottom to top. BT you can say bottom to top. So how do we do it? Let's say in this case 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this was your 9 number. So to get the column number of it, what we will do? So see, we are moving from right to left in this case and left to right in this case. When we are moving from left to right, there is no issue. But when we are moving from right to left, we have to check for these conditions. So the number is 9, 9 minus 1 modulus 6 so 8 modulus 6 so what are you getting you are getting 2 but is that the column number of it no so what will you do you will do uh, let me just make it let me write it here so what will you do you are getting 2 so what you will do you will do 9 n minus 1 minus this column number yes or no so 6 minus 1 minus 2 so what are you getting 3 is 3 the column number of this element? Yes. 3 is the right answer. So that is what you have to do. So how do we check whether it is moving from right to left or left to right? So for that, you have to notice, you have to check it on your own. I have noticed it and it comes from experience or someone can teach you that whenever n is even, the row which you was getting, if it is even, if both are even, it is moving from right, left to right. Or in other cases, when n is odd, let's say 3, and the row is also odd. In that case, we are moving from right to left. Got it? When your n and this final row, which you are getting from this formula, from bottom to top, yes or no? The final row from that and your n are same that is both are even or both are odd then in that case you have to apply this column formula and change the column formula to n minus 1 and as i told you y minus 1 because it is zero base indexing 
so this get coordinate function was the only alienated or new thing in this question rest is simple bfs the question may seem too complicated but all you have to do is apply bfs and you will easily solve it so i request you all to please try this on your own let me zoom it for you and then we will move on to the coding part so to code this what i told you you only have to apply bfs and only alienated thing will be the get coordinate function which you are using to get the coordinate values in these cases whenever you are using a ladder or you are getting bitten by a snake because the board is consisting of minus 1 and the ladder final coordinates where the ladder will lead to yes or no so let's declare a global variable and so we do not have to pass the size of the board and what is this and it is board dot size after that you have to apply bfs also you will return the steps right end steps will be your answer so let's initialize the steps with zero so how do we apply bfs you need to get a queue so you create a queue after that you will also need to create a vector boolean array to mark them visited yes or no so to create a vector boolean array you will write it like this vector vector bool visited and to give it size you will give it size n also you have to initialize each one of them initially with uh, false condition yes or no so for that you do it like this so they are initialized false every element is false initially and they are, that is they are not visited yet and you start the you are start with the first coordinate yes or no so you make it as visited that is visited n minus 1 0 is equal to true as i told you in this example that is this is the fifth if there are six element we are starting from n minus 1 that is 5 comma 0 coordinate yes or no so that is why you are taking visited n minus 1 0 is equal to 2 you are starting with that after that what you will do you will push the first coordinate and for dfs this the normal syntax is while q is not empty what you will do you will get the q size that is q dot size after getting the size of q you will make a while loop that says while size is not empty while you are decreasing size that means you are popping off elements one by one and how do you pop you will store the element according to the queue inside a new variable and you will pop the queue okay when you pop the queue if we get the condition when our x is equal to x is equal to n cross n that is we have reached the end of the matrix that we have reached this position we will simply return our steps but if we haven't reached the ending position what we have to do to check for the six possibilities of dice we will make a loop as in other questions you have seen rotten tomatoes or number of iron we make loop to deal with many cases yes or no so you will write for int k is equal to 1 k less than equal to 6 because there are six possibilities what you will do you will make a new variable which will store x plus k values as i told you in this example yes or no x plus k values x plus k values that is from 1 you can move up to 2 3 4 5 6 7 you can move to up to x plus k values and if this value is greater than n cross n suppose you exceed the number of coordinates then you will simply break that might not be possible but in the worst case that might be the case so now as i told you we are given minus one minus one in every other places except for the ladder and snake so to deal with that what i told you we will make a pair pair int comment coordinates and we will get the coordinates from a single value and after that we will initialize our row to coordinate dot first and our column to coordinate dot second that will give you the first and second value of the pair and we will have to complete this get coordinate function to get the actual coordinates okay and now if visited of this row and column is already true so then we don't have to visit them so we will simply continue but if they are not visited we will make them true then after that what we will do we will check whether that coordinate is having minus one value if it is having minus one value then we will simply push 
our value inside our queue but if it is not having minus one value what we will do we will push the actual coordinate of that position and if it is at second position it will push 15 in this case as i told you in the example so this is a pretty good question you just have to apply dfs and all you have to thought about was this get coordinate function to get the actual coordinate out of this minus one matrix yes or no and when you are done with this while loop and you exit the loop what you will do you will increase the step you will have to increase the steps when you exit the whole while loop that means you are done with one iteration and you have to you are moving to the next position so steps plus plus and when you are done with all this steps plus plus and when you are done with all this you will see that if we haven't returned the answer in this position where we have written return steps what we will simply return we will return minus one and that in, is in the worst case if it is not possible to reach the square but there are cases whether it is where it is not possible to reach the square okay so that is all you have to do now let's com complete this get coordinate function so what will be the data type of this get coordinate function it will be pair pair int comma int and we will get the get coordinate function and we will pass a int num numerical value to it after that what i told you we will get the row from top and what is the general formula for this number minus one divided by n but we are getting from going from bottom to top so for that what i told you row will become n minus one minus this rt and for column what i told you we are getting num minus one modulus n but if the column number and n both are odd or both are even what we have to do we are moving from right to left and that you have to observe so for that what you will do if n modulus 2 is equal to 0 and n modulus and row modulus 2 is also 0 that is one case also you have to check for odd conditions yes or no so for that you will write or n modulus 2 is equal to 1 and row modulus 2 is equal to 1 then what you will do you will update our column to n minus 1 minus column so this is all you have to do and finally what you will return you will return a pair of row comma column so i hope you understood this get coordinate function and everything else you simply have to apply bfs let's just run it and check whether it is working or, or not uh bisted we have written in line 19 it is visited so yeah it is accepted for all the cases let's just submit it and check whether it is accepted or not so yeah it is accepted so yeah it is getting accepted for all the cases let me just brief you with the question again we simply have to apply dfs and the only condition we was needed to think of was this get coordinate function because you were given a matrix of minus one coordinates and the snake and ladder coordinates were given so this was the tricky part in this question and rest was really easy please try to practice more questions like these and if you have any doubt do let me know in the comment section so the time complexity of a bfs is o v plus c and in this case it will be o n square and the space complexity will also be O n square. I hope you liked the video. Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.